So welcome back to another FIFA 21 video. Today we are talking about FIFA 21 career mode. Now, I've been playing career mode for the last two weeks, including the early access part. And I think I've played FIFA 21 career mode probably more than I did FIFA 20 career mode all year. So it's safe to say that so far, I am having fun with the mode. Today I wanted to do a video that I usually make each year and I want to talk about the things that I like in FIFA 21 crew mode. Don't worry, we still have the things I hate video coming really soon but today it's all about that positivity. If you enjoy, leave a like for me and if you are new to the channel and you want to catch the latest FIFA 21 news and crew mode content, make sure you subscribe today. So I am enjoying the player conversion feature in FIFA 21 crew mode. This is a new feature that came in this year and it's definitely something that I like. I've changed numerous players in my save. If you take a look at players like Pereira, there's three positions on the guy. Scott McTominay became a CM from a CDM. Osmane Dembele, I believe, was a left winger, and then he became a right midfielder. Uh, Greenwood as well, from a right midfielder position up to a striker. This is a very nice feature because it lets you um, just make your players more versatile. Like Sometimes you don't have the money to go and buy players in different positions that you need. But then you've got some players in your team that can do the job if you convert them. So like a Greenwood, I didn't have much going up front in the striker department. So I just converted him from a right mid to a striker. And, you know, after a couple of weeks, he was playing up front for me like a normal striker. So, yeah, sometimes it's just good because you don't have to spend money. You can make your players more versatile, give them two or three different positions. And uh, I've used this already numerous times. I didn't expect to like it as much as I have. So this feature as well came in this year, and uh, I do like this feature. It's a nice uh, thing that EA put into the game, and that is the ability to, you know, grow the position. And you can see with players like Harry Maguire, you can leave them on a balanced plan, but sometimes it doesn't grow the certain attributes that you actually want from a player. Like, why would I want to improve his free kick accuracy? It's not really important. I'm not going to be taking free kicks with Harry Maguire. So what I do, I put him as a stopper, and you can see that it concentrates on the most important attributes of that stopper role. Obviously a balanced plan might be good for most of your players and that's what I've done at the moment but for certain players that might be underperforming you might want to make them a bit quicker like a Harry Maguire or something this feature is going to be good for you. Now one thing I like in FIFA 21 crew mode as well is the fact that EA has made the process of getting into the match a bit quicker. So if we take a look at the play match button before you would have to like select a side, select your kits, all that kind of stuff but now it's auto selected so pretty much all you have to do is Press that button there, play match, and you're good to go. So it's nice now that EA has decided to make it an automated process where you can just click it, and in one or two seconds, you're into the match ready to go. And while we're here, I'll also mention that I do like this new pre-match feature, this new screen that EA has where it shows you the probable lineup. It's better than what we had before, you know, and it's nice to see new menus in crew mode. Sometimes you get bored of seeing the same thing. Obviously, most of the core fundamentals of crew mode are the same in terms of the menu design and stuff, but this is new, and it's nice to see new stuff every now and then. Now, one thing I do like as well this year is the visual sim feature. This one is very useful because it gives you more control when you decide to sim a game. I don't really sim too many games in crew mode, but... When I do, I'll pick this over the quick sim just in case things start going wrong. You can jump in within a matter of seconds and you can start playing the match, try and rescue your team out of trouble. You can also take certain situations into your own hands like a penalty, a free kick. Now what's nice as well is that you can make changes pressing the triangle button. So you can make subs if you really want to. You can also jump into the match by pressing the square. And in three seconds, you're already on the field at the exact moment that the visual sim is playing at. You can also jump back out. So if you get bored halfway through, in a couple of seconds, you're back in the visual sim. Now, you can also check the player fitness, the bench, the player ratings, the stats. It's a lot more in-depth than a quick sim, which is nice. And at least EA still gives you the option to do quick sim as well. Now, another useful feature in crew mode is the ability to pause the game and go straight to the end of the result. So if you go straight to jump to result, It'll finish the game off in a quick sim sort of way and, you know, you skip whatever time you had on that match. Now, I find this useful because sometimes you're winning 5 or 6 nil. You don't want to, you know, play the rest of the match. You might have like half an hour, 40 minutes left. You just want to go into the next match because you're winning by so much. It doesn't really matter. So this jump to result feature is a nice one to have because you're not actually forfeiting the match. It just finishes the game early for you so you can move on and do other things. Another thing I do enjoy in FIFA 21 crew mode this year is the updated background menus. It's better than seeing that purple that is in this game. I mean, at least we get to see Premier League branding, Champions League branding. Depending on what competitions you're in, you might see different stuff. Now, I know the background feature has carried over from FIFA 20, but in FIFA 21, EA has improved it and added the splashbacks to more parts of the crew mode menus and stuff, which is a nice touch because it does look very good. Another thing I like in FIFA 21 crew mode is that 
real players in the game can become managers. You have to do like a workaround thing in player career. It was sort of similar in FIFA 20. I think it works exactly the same actually. So let's say you've got an older player like Gigi Buffon. He's 41 years old. Maybe you want to make him a manager. Well, because he's available in player career mode, you can set him up as a player career and you can just basically uh, convert him into a manager. So obviously this storyline would make sense, you know, and a lot of people maybe don't want to use the creator manager system. They want to use like a real life manager and this is probably one of the best ways to do it in the game. So you go to your little squad hub thing in player career mode. You retire your player. You confirm the retirement. So you can put Buffon in Italy, you can put him in Germany, France, whatever the game gives you. So let's say you want to do Crotone or something. You just sign a contract like you normally would. And it takes you straight into manager career mode with Buffon. And the good thing about this as well is that many years ago, you know, when you would retire the player, he wouldn't even have the real face in manager mode. He would have like a generic face. But it looks like in FIFA 21, it still works. The players you retire keep their real face in manager career mode. So that looks pretty good. Now, one thing I do like in FIFA 21 career mode, and it's another new feature EA introduced this year, that is the financial takeover setting in the pre-setup page for career mode. Now, the EA catalog did have a few financial takeover tokens you could redeem, but it wasn't a really good system, and EA decided to scrap it in FIFA 21, and they put the setting into this tile here. Now, this is good because you can create different storylines for each club, depending on how much money you want to give them. Of course, you can disable it, but you can also enable it and give them little budgets, or massive budgets like 500 million, which is going to be unrealistic in most cases, but it all depends on what you want to do. So let's say you've got Sydney FC and they've got a budget of 4.2 million. This can be any club like a League 4 team or something, and uh, you can go into this financial takeover thing, give them 500 million, and set them up for some sort of like world dominance with this kind of money. Like I said, you can choose to use it or not. But it's better than having the financial takeover tokens in the EA catalog. Another nice thing introduced in FIFA 21 career mode this year that I really like is the negotiation strictness setting. This was in PES and it sort of gives you two ways of playing career mode. There's a strict way and a loose way. Loose way, you can sign pretty much whoever you look at. Players are going to be more willing to transfer to you. It doesn't mean you're going to, you know, have total success in the transfer market. But it's going to be much easier to bring in the players you really want to your club. If you go to a strict setting, it's going to make things much, much harder. You won't get world-class talent on a free transfer. You won't get world-class talent in general because the clubs won't be willing to let them go. Players might not want to come to your club because they hold a grudge against your club or something. It's much more stricter and it all depends on what you want to do in your save. For more realism, pick the strict setting. For less realism, pick the loose setting. I really like this one because it just gives the people more choice on what they want to do with their save. So next up, I want to talk about competitor mode. This is something I like in the game, even though I don't really personally use it. I like it because it gives people more options in terms of having a harder difficulty. Now, it does make it feel like you're versing an eSports pro, and that's what it's designed to do. It makes me a little bit dizzy when I actually watch it, because it's just too many skill moves, and even Harry Maguire is pulling off some sort of five-star skill moves. So I turn it off personally, but I like it because it gives those people that want the challenge that option. So let's do some notable mentions carrying over from FIFA 20 since they are a part of crew mode this year. So I do like the press conferences, even though they get a little bit repetitive, a little bit easy to boost morale and stuff. Could EA make this better in the future? Definitely, but for what it's worth, you know, it's better than what we had in those old FIFA 19 crew modes and that. So press conferences are not too bad. Even the post-match interviews are decent enough. Yes, they get repetitive. Yes, they get boring after a while, but, you know, it's still nice to have them in the game. Manager customization carries over from FIFA 20. I like that feature. I like how you can create a guy and put outfits on him and change the outfits halfway through the season. The only problem is uh, I would like to have a scanned face feature. Also, you know, take this to the next level using legend managers and all that kind of stuff. Match day presentations, once again, they look pretty good. If you're in the Premier League, if you're in one of those licensed competitions that EA partners up with, you're going to have a pretty decent presentation package. And another thing I like this year in career mode is the player swap deals. I like how the AI can now send you player swap offers. So it's just giving you an extra thing to think about when you get your transfer offers. And I also like how now you can do loan to buy offers when you go in for a loan player. And I like how you can receive them as well. Now one thing that looks improved in FIFA 21 crew mode and I'm happy about it is the league tables. There's no more invincible teams. I mean PSG did lose one match and drew eight games but still you're not getting those invincibles where they win like 37 out of the 38 games and it's very hard to win the league. So they needed to fix that this year because it would have made crew mode unplayable once again. So I like how the league tables are a little bit more toned down. So those were the things I like in FIFA 21 crew mode. Let me know down below what are the things you like in the game mode. There will be time for the things we hate, don't worry. It's not all perfect in crew mode this year, but 
I think for the most part I am having a fun time. I think you guys are enjoying it too. It's much better than previous iterations of the game mode. If you enjoyed today's video, leave a like. If you're new around here, make sure you subscribe. And please check out this FIFA video. Hit the card in the middle. It'll take you right there. I'll see you next time.